right now in Finland, there is a presidential election going on. And we are actually in the second round already. So it means that usually during the first round, if somebody gets more than half of the vote, then that person will become the president. But during the first round this time, none of them got more than half of the votes. That's why two of the candidates who got the most and second most votes are competing in this second round. And those candidates are Pekka Havisto and Alexander Staub. And few months ago, I made a video where I went to see the current president, Saudi Ninisto, because he was taking a walk with the Helsinki citizens and I went to see him. So I thought maybe this time I could see two candidates and show how the campaigns and events look like. And today there is an event where Pekka Havisto is attending, so I'm going there and film some video clips to show how it looks like. And after a few days, there is another event where the other candidate, Alexander Stubb, is attending, so I'm going there as well. But before that, I need to eat something, so as usual in my vlog, <laughs> I'm gonna cook some food and eat it, and then I'm going there. And please note that this video is not intended to be supporting any of the candidates. It's more like I want to show you how the presidential election event looks like. And anyway, I'm not eligible to vote because I'm not a Finnish citizen. And I have leftover from last night, so this black stuff is seaweed, we call it hijiki, and deep fried tofu, carrots, and soy, and the taste is soy sauce, mirin, and some soup stock, fish soup stock. And I have some leftover miso soup as well. Quite a huge portion of rice, <laughs> but rice goes really well with gyoza, the dumplings, so it's gonna be a good lunch. I found this presidential election quite interesting for several reasons. So first of all, in Japan we don't have president, we have emperor, but we don't choose them. So it's nice to see the process. And another thing is when the current president, Saudi Ninisto, was elected six years ago, it was kind of like obvious that he will be elected again. But this time the situation is not really clear, so you know, it's exciting to see it. And then one thing I liked was the high voting rate because it has more than 70% and I think it's really high. Yeah, but anyway, let's see what kind of atmosphere and what will be happening there. <laughs> So I was in the train and uh, 
ticket inspectors came to check the ticket. Of course, I had this AB zone ticket as always, but there was this one passenger beside me who didn't have the ticket and she just kept making excuses and she kept complaining. But they are really, you know, those ticket inspectors are usually very strict and it took like quite a long time for the inspector to, you know, explain what's wrong. And but apparently, that was uh, the passenger's mistake because she simply didn't have the ticket or she said she forgot it but usually it doesn't work I haven't seen any situation where they actually allowed them to take a train without a ticket and the passenger was really surprised that the fine is 100 euros it used to be 80 euros but now it's 100 euros okay now 5 minutes before it's supposed to be starting uh, there aren't not too many people yet let's see if there are more people later i can't see pekka harvesto yet where is he Actually, I was expecting like even bigger crowds because I saw some video clips from Vasa yesterday that there are so many people in some shopping malls. But here, uh, there aren't too many people. Maybe because uh, it's outside or it's Sunday evening. Yeah, but still, this is a high carbon city, so Helsinki metropolitan area. So I think there should be more people. Maybe they didn't, you know, advertise much. Yeah, and a few days later, I'm going to see uh, Alexander Stapp's uh, like e event. It's gonna be also outside. So let's see how many people will there be. I would say this one is pretty like a uh, calm, not really like a uh, very energetic but i think he wants to tell his you know message in a calm way this time i guess and then how he speaks is also really calm and quite like quiet i would say so it'll be interesting to compare like how alexander starts communicate with the supporters I took a train to go home and there were uh, ticket inspectors again and there was this one <laughs> passenger who got fined so in one hour I saw two cases nowadays maybe by 50% chance when ticket inspectors come <laughs> I see somebody who didn't have ticket and get fined I wonder how much money they usually make in one day from the fine so for example in Finland there is no gate to take a train so basically you can take a train for free of course you might get fined and I read it somewhere that according to some research done by Finnish government or some organization in Finland they found out that they make more money by keeping current system so making money from the fine not like investing to build a gate and now I'm wondering which way is better to make more money like for the company or for the government <laughs> Maybe I need to check it out. <laughs> I'm now checking about Helsinki's public transport using ticket inspectors instead of the gates. Uh, I actually found some discussions in some forum and also there are some articles from a few years ago and one of the articles says they have investigated already before 2010 and in practice they decided not to build the gates due to the cost reasons and they say that the biggest cost would not be the installation of the gates itself but the architecture of the metro station so rebuilding the metro stations is the biggest cost because the current train and metro stations are made based on the principle of no gates and they need to change some structures and it costs a lot 
And also it says that at gated stations there must always be staff present. So there might be some passengers who need help or the gates might break down. So basically extra cost is estimated. So the view of Helsinki public transport is that in the end the gates would be no use in preventing ticketless passengers. Because for example in Paris or New York, even though they have gates, there are always passengers who just jump the gate. So some of them just take the public transport without paying. And in order to support their argument, they also show this one example that the gates are in use in Stockholm's metro and the percentage of ticketless passengers there is practically the same as ours. So basically in Stockholm, like there are nearly the same amount of people who don't pay for the ticket as much as in Helsinki. Yeah, so I think this is the reason. So from Helsinki's point of view, Right now they are getting stable income from people who buy the ticket and anyway there are like always certain amount of people who don't pay the ticket regardless of their the gates or not. So I think uh, they concluded that uh, uh, making a gate will just require additional costs and it doesn't really increase the amount of sales and also it doesn't prevent people from not buying it. Yeah, now things are a bit more clear, but if you have any thoughts about it, please feel free to comment in the comment section. Okay, so I'm going to this event today. Oh, it's more like I'm gonna go check it. I'm not gonna stay for long. But the good thing is at least they are saying they will provide uh, sausage and coffee. <laughs> I hope I will get it. The election day is on Sunday, so after two days, but actually you can vote in advance. And according to this news article by Yule, already 46% of the voters voted during this advanced voting period and it's record high number. So it's showing people really keen on it. And now I'm going to see Alexander Stoob, so let's see how the event looks like and how many people will be there. Okay, I'm heading to the venue. Ah, I see some crowds already. sen päivän politiikan yläpuolella. Mutta se tarkoittaa sitä, että silloin kun käyttää sitä sanaa. I know I can't simply compare, but uh uh, there are like way more people here compared to the one I went like a few days ago uh, for the big harvestos like event and people lining up for the sausage and coffee I also want it maybe I should line up <laughs> Okay, I left the place. This one was uh, quite lively. I wanted to stay a bit more, but it's just so cold today. It's kind of unfortunate <laughs> for the, the event organizer and the stoop because I think people wanted to stay longer, but it was just so cold. It's like minus 15 degrees now. That's why in a way the makkara or sausage <laughs> tasted really good. <laughs> and I got some chocolates and also this kind of goods as well. Because both like harvest and stoop stayed just like a 30 minutes. So it's not really easy to you know tell the difference it's like in the speech itself. But if I talk about atmosphere, apparently I saw some small differences even though I just can't compare from like each event. And apparently he is leading now in the second round as well. 
I'm not here to talk about you know politics itself, but apparently people who voted for you know some other party such as personalized will be likely to vote for Stoop. So everybody says maybe he might win, but let's see. And one thing I found interesting was like they are both presidential candidates, but they don't even have bodyguards and people just talk to them casually and it's not gonna happen in Japan. Usually when those big politicians make some speech, there are always so many people like who guard them. That's what I was talking to my colleagues as well. Like in Finland, even celebrities can have some sort of private privacy. <laughs> and people don't really like care, maybe in a good way. But yeah, I was in a way worried that what about security? <laughs> like what if somebody comes, you know, attack them or but maybe you don't really have to worry much about it here. But anyway, we will know the result of the election in 48 hours, so let's see. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching this vlog and see you in my next video. Moikka!